morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about energy resources. Topic for the day is going to be solar and wind energy. So like always, let me get you some objectives, and we'll get going. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the process of generating solar and wind energy and also explain the benefits and drawbacks of each type of energy. So today I've lumped together solar and wind energy because solar energy drives wind energy, so I figured that they were a natural fit with one another. Let's talk about solar energy just right off the bat. We've talked about previously that solar energy is the source of all energy. It drives the water cycle, it causes the wind, it can be used directly as energy source itself. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we talk through our two types of renewable energy today. And we're going to start out with solar energy and I want to begin by showing you this map. This is a map of solar potential in America. The darker the color, the more potential there is for uh, electricity generation using solar energy. So most of the country has got pretty good potential for generating electricity using solar power. Obviously the area that has got the most potential is right down here in the southwest where it is sunny for most of the year. But even this area through the mountain states and the south and the southeast has got really good potential. The only parts of America that really don't have very good potential for for generating electricity using solar energy would be up here in the Pacific Northwest and then Alaska. But generally as a country, we are ripe and ready to start producing a lot of electricity using the power of the sun. As we talk about generating electricity and energy with the sun, we need to go back and revisit the idea of passive solar energy versus active solar energy. If you are talking about passive solar energy, you are not using any devices or technology. And by devices or technology, I mean pumps or converters or anything like that. You are just using a device to capture solar energy. So in the previous video where we were talking about sustainable design, we talked about design uh, elements in a house that can passively utilize the energy of the sun. Another example of a passive design would be a solar oven. Solar ovens are just boxes that have got reflective material inside and a glass lid. They can use the power of the sun to maintain a temperature around 350 degrees. They can be used to boil water, cook dinners. They're a really good option for parts of the world where um, electricity or other fuels may not be available for cooking. And they can be thought of as a sustainable solution because rather than going out and cutting firewood to start fires and cook, people in these areas can use a solar oven to get the same amount of cooking done. The rest of our talk about solar today is going to be about active solar. And if we're talking about active solar, we're talking about something that actually uses a device to capture the energy of the sun. And I'm going to go through three different uh, options or examples, and then that'll be it for solar energy. The first example I want to talk about is a solar water heater. And this is a technology that has been around forever. Basically, you are using the energy from the sun to heat up water that you will use in your house. And let me walk you through this diagram over here to kind of show you how the thing works. So on the roof or on the ground or on the side of the house, you will have a solar collector. And the solar collector is going to be a big black panel. Black uh, attracts and absorbs solar radiation very well. In that panel, you're going to have a series of pipes through which fluid is going to circulate. Now, there are two options. There's always going to be a tank involved. In the simplest design, this tank is just an open storage tank. So water is pumped up. So we've got an active technology. We've got a pump right there. Cold water is pumped up, it runs through the solar panel as it runs through there, it gets heated up, and then it gets stored in the tank, just like a regular water heater for use in the house whenever needed. In areas of the world where there's the potential that temperatures will get down below freezing, a fluid needs to be used in these solar panels that will not freeze, so it's like an antifreeze liquid. In those cases, what happens is that antifreeze liquid comes up, it circulates through this uh, solar panel. The antifreeze liquid gets heated up. It comes down into what is known as a heat exchanger. A heat exchanger is a device that allows heat to be transferred from one place to another. So that fluid flows down into the heat exchanger. Within the heat exchanger, it warms up the water. That water is then stored in the tank for use and the antifreeze fluid flows through again. So this would be an example of a solar water heater being used to provide hot water for the house. Um, a lot of passive or a lot of these solar water heater systems will usually also have an electric or fossil fuel backup in case the sun isn't shining and you still need hot water in your house. 
When people think of solar energy, they usually think of the solar panel, which is known as a photovoltaic system. Think about this name here, and it tells you what it does. Photo refers to light. Voltaic refers to electricity. So we are, we are using light to produce electricity. And basically what these are is it is a panel made of silicone and other elements. And what the panel essentially does is it takes the light from the sun, when the light from the sun uh, strikes this silicon panel, the electrons in the panel get all excited and start flowing around. The flow of electrons can be captured and used as electricity. So this is a direct solar technology. You're taking this panel, you're not using the heat of the sun at all, you're just using the light. So that light strikes the panel, makes it produce electricity, and then you know you get a nice easy flow of electrons going on here that can just be used continuously. Photovoltaic systems are really nice because you can just install, install them on a house. You can connect them directly to the power system in the house and you can get electricity from them. Also, a lot of power companies allow people that have got photovoltaic systems on their house to connect their system to the grid. And if that person produces more electricity than they actually use in their house, the extra electricity goes back into the grid. The power company pays them for that extra energy or gives them credit towards their future future bills. Um, there are also some places in the world where uh, governments are talking about putting in wide, huge arrays of solar panels. So this would be like a big area of desert or something that would be covered with a ton of solar panels. Those solar panels then would generate electricity that would be distributed to the city that is in need. And the last solar technology I want to talk about is a concentrating solar thermal plant. Now, if you look at this picture right here, first thing you see right off the bat is that they take up a lot of area, but basically they work like a magnifying glass. You've got this array of mirrors surrounded a central tower. So in the central tower right here, you've got water that flows up and down. And all of these mirrors throughout the day, they're focusing sunlight into one tiny little beam up on the top of this tower. As that solar beam is focused on the tower, it heats up water, which turns to steam, and then the steam turns to turbine, which turns to the generator, just like any other normal thermal electricity generation plant. So this is kind of a cool setup because, you know, you are basically working like a thermal plant, the electricity generation we know, but you're using the sun to do it instead of burning a fossil fuel. Now, opponents of this type of electricity generation look at this and say that takes up a huge amount of land. What kind of habitat is being destroyed or what kind of animals aren't able to live in the area or what is the environmental damage of producing all these solar cells? So it's kind of controversial, but it is a clean way to produce electricity. And I'm going to wrap up solar energy with a quick run through of the benefits and drawbacks. So major benefits, no air or water pollution or carbon dioxide generation while they are making electricity. So Electricity is essentially be made, being made cleanly. It's also free electricity. As long as the sun's shining, you are getting electricity. It also produces electricity during peak demand. So that peak demand is when people are pulling most electricity from the grid. That's going to be like a hot, sunny summer day when everybody's running their air conditioning. That's the time when solar energy is at its best. So those would be some of the benefits. Some of the drawbacks is those photovoltaic panels are expensive to make. Um, they have not yet been made in massive enough quantity for the price to come down significantly, though we're getting there. Um, a lot of people also point to them and say that they're inefficient. A solar panel can usually transfer something like 15 to 20 percent of the solar energy that it hit, that hits it into electricity. So because they're relatively inefficient, they've got to be pretty big. Um, the process of making photovoltaic panels uh, includes a lot of really harsh chemicals and toxins and heavy metals. So Producing those things is hard on the environment, and also recycling them is hard on the environment. And finally, obviously you can only make electricity when the sun is shining. So that means that you need a means of storing energy when the sun isn't shining. Batteries are the best bet for doing that, but batteries lose electricity over time. So while they can store electricity, they're probably not the best option because you spend all day charging them, and then they still drain out energy in the evening whether you're using them or not. Last energy we're gonna talk about for the day is going to be wind energy and this is due to the unequal heating of the earth's surface remember if areas of the earth's surface get warmer they cause air to rise up cooler surfaces cool the air causing air to fall down so this rising and falling convection cell of air causes the wind we can harness the movement of that wind to produce electricity 
It's got to be noted that when we talk about wind electricity, people should be looking at America because we uh, have got a little imbalance here. If you talk about countries that have the greatest capacity, so that means the most wind and the most land available to produce wind energy, the United States far and away has got the highest capacity for wind generation. So looking at this, we should be a global leader in the generation of electricity using the wind because we have the greatest ability to do so. I'm going to compare us to Denmark because they fit the other graph over here. Denmark, as far as capacity goes, is all the way down here. Now, if we look at how much of a country's energy is actually generated using the wind, you got Denmark over here as the world leader at over 20% of their energy coming from the wind. You got America down here with way less than 3%. So we're like 1% to 2% of our electricity comes from the wind. So while America could be the world leader in generating electricity from the wind, we certainly are not. So we've got some work to do on that end of things. Talking specifically about wind energy, you need to understand the wind turbine. So unlike uh, solar thermals or other thermal generation plants where you have to burn something to turn the turbine to turn the generator, in this case the windmill is the turbine. So as the wind blows on that windmill, it spins, the spinning of the blades turns the generator, which makes electricity. Don't need any heat to do that. You can do it onshore or offshore. Actually, a lot of places in the world build wind turbines offshore because wind conditions are more consistent and the wind blows harder offshore. So a lot of countries are looking at that as an option for producing wind energy. The bigger the turbine can be built, the better. So some of these wind turbines can be over 300 feet tall and have a blade span of 250 or 300 feet. So they are huge things that can generate quite a lot. Of electricity they are usually built in wind farms all together in one place let's go through the benefits and drawbacks of this type of energy so the benefits and drawbacks this is a non depletable resource so like solar energy no matter how much we use it there is not going to be less of it because the wind is just going to keep on blowing the only fossil fuel that's needed for uh, producing wind energy is the fossil fuel that's needed to transport the windmill to its place and then to shuttle workers back and forth to work on them once it's put up, it is a non-polluting source of energy that is free. And unlike solar uh, wind farms, or not solar wind farms, solar arrays, like I talked about those concentrating solar plants, those use up a ton of land that can't be used for anything else. If you build a wind turbine, you can still plant crops around the base of that turbine. You can have cattle graze. So you get kind of a dual purpose use out of the land where you can still do stuff on it, but you also are able to produce electricity. Now, some of the drawbacks, you got the batteries for storage problem again. Obviously, the wind doesn't blow all the time, so you have to find a way to store that electricity. And batteries, like we said, lose energy over time. Also, like solar energy, distribution is a problem because the areas that generate the most wind energy aren't necessarily near the biggest cities that need that energy. So uh, systems need to be set up to trans transmit that electricity from the places that can generate it to the places that actually need it. Um, some people complain about the noise of wind turbines. Some people don't like the w look of wind turbines. And also, they kill birds and bats occasionally. So, you know, there are benefits, there are drawbacks. I would say that the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks, but people still fight against the construction of wind turbines. So that's what we got for the day. Wind and solar energy. Thanks for joining us on the Live 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. We'll see you again.